Hello, I'm Simon. And I'm Dan. And this is the Wikicast, a podcast where we discuss the likelihood of football coming... Oh, no. Alright, hang on. No, no, it's the other thing. So, it's been oh, so long. It's been too long. It's been it, too long. So, this is this is the Wikicast, a podcast where Wikipedia takes us to a random article each week and we talk about what we find. Daniel, what are we talking about this week? This week, Simon, we are talking about Vikram Bawa. Vikram Bawa. Hmm. Right. Okay. Would you like to know more? I would. A desire to know more intensifies, yes. That's good, because that is kind of the point of this podcast. So... Vikram uh, Bawa, born on the 16th of March 1970, is an Indian fashion, advertising and landscape photographer based in Mumbai. He was the first Indian photographer to promote and showcase 3D photography in the late 1990s. Wow. Yeah. Okay, that's, that's, that's really interesting, actually. He that, looks that... like a very trendy dude. Well, I mean, as a photographer, you'd hope that he would have a good picture of him. Well, mm. to be, though, to be fair, it's like how when you go to the barbers, like we kind of talked about last week, like how I had a haircut. Um, mm. You always pick the person, if you have a choice, with the worst haircut. Yeah. Because they get everyone else gets their haircuts from him. So in a way, you want the photographer who has the worst picture. Because, because he's the one taking the good pictures of everyone else. So maybe this guy's not all that. I don't know. Mm. But that, well, so what was it? He was fashion, landscape and something else. Indian fashion, advertising and landscape photographer based they, in Mumbai. Those are rather different things. Fashion photography and landscape photography aren't even vaguely alike. I mean, they both no, involve I, the camera, but other than yeah, that... Yeah, I suppose you're kind of... Yeah, the, the, the kind of point from point of attack is different for each one, but I, I, maybe the kind of a similar skill set can be applied to all of them. His... his it gets it gets more interesting. I'm going to go on and I'm going to tell you a little bit more. He was born in Delhi. Less interesting, however, he moved with his parents to Mumbai at an early age. He went to Green Lawns High School, Mumbai. After which he graduated with uh, graduated in maths from Elphinstone oh. College, Mumbai. He then started work as the managing director of a chemical firm at age 18. I'm sorry, what? Yeah, he started work as the managing director of a chemical firm at age 18. So he st- he start- it's, it's his first job mm-hmm. was as the managing director. Okay. Yeah. Br- 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 did- <laughs> okay. Two right. years prior My brain to just that. broke with all the questions I have at I the moment. It's just, I mean, okay, so it says, it goes on to say, two years prior. So when he was 16, he started photography as a hobby. However, it wasn't until 1996 when he started photography professionally. Um, apparently his mother and father were avid uh, hobbyists, which influenced him. Okay, so so I'm still not getting any any like close to understanding how he became the managing director of a chemicals company because nothing else in his no past as indicates anything to do with chemistry or business. No, and he graduated with, in maths. Yeah, so not chemistry, not business, not management, not photography, no, uh, not photography. Um, he's worked for Coca Cola, uh-huh. Dove, Godredge, L'Oreal, Reebok. Skoda India, Sony Electronics, Taj Hotels, Catwalk, Kingfisher Airlines, Sahara Amber Valley, oh, Sahara Ambi Valley, sorry, uh, the Leela Palace, uh, Goa, and FSP London. So, so okay, so he's like a serious photographer. This this dude, he's quite, is, yeah, is, he's, knows his stuff. Yeah, and yeah, he's um. So, so he, is that can we can we fill in this detail between it being the managing director at eighteen and becoming well, a wish, photographer? Is there any I wish information I could. about that? There's absolutely nothing. It's a throwaway sentence. Oh, by the way, by the way, he was just, uh, he was an MD. Is he also a doctor? Is, is he also, has he been to space? I wouldn't be surprised. Oh, uh, yeah, he does live on Mars. Yeah, <laughs> just, yeah. For a second then I thought you were actually serious. <laughs> no, sadly not. It says here that, uh, no, where was he? Under recognition and awards. It begins by saying, rightly called as master of gimmicks in the world of fashion photography, Vikram has won many awards from Masters Cup, uh, Prix de la Photographie Paris, uh, the International Colour Awards, Spider Awards, Asian Photography Most Influential Photographer Award, and the PIEA Award, and many more. He received four international awards for his uh, Lila Palace Goa Hotel campaign, a first for any Indian hotel campaign. His fashion film, The Long Show, was nominated for the International Fashion Film Awards, IFFA, in 2014 for Best Art Direction and Best Music nomination. And he was judged as the second best photographer at the PMA International Awards USA for his 3D photography. The images were part of a 30-country travelling exhibition. Wow. 
Crikey Moses. Like the whole th- it's interesting actually with um sort of that we get this article today because just yesterday it was Pixel Girl's birthday. Um and mm. you, you, we actually Happy you, birthday. you called actually, didn't you? We we, we were talking about uh, our upcoming visit to Exeter, which is terribly exciting. Mm. We we'll have to try and do something actually whilst we're uh, around. Um and um, we went to London to take some pictures because I got her a Polaroid camera, but it was one that had a couple of different. It wasn't the kind of thing you get at a like a party where it was a relatively cheap one. I I splashed out and I got what I thought was really quite a nice one, and it has different modes. So you can, for example, take double exposures with it, and you can oh, you cool. have like bulb exposures, so you can hold down the shutter as long as you want. And we were sort of talking about how it actually really brings you back to the earliest days of photography where everything is done in the camera. There's no manipulation afterwards. You don't get to take like second shots unless you want to spend another half as much it is for the, you know, the actual shot. So, you know, the whole artistry of photography actually really hit home then. I think up Mm. until recent, up until then, I've always thought of photography as like, it's almost uh like a digital it's it's a question of who has the most money who can get the nice equipment and then who has the most patience and skill with photoshop and lightroom but actually there is so much that you do in the camera and like people people what was his name again uh vikram bawa people like vikram i uh, like actually have an artistry to them that i don't think i fully appreciate like because i do Mm. obviously there's a similarity between photography and videography um but you know one is like like photography is still a a kettle of fish all on its own it's a completely different Mm. kettle of fish but i really wish i was better at have you have you ever dabbled in photography yeah i did some i did some kind of courses when i was at school um i mean i remember one of the first things i spoke about with you was I, i i was much more of a keen photographer than i was videographer so in terms of using a camera to take photos i'm 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 fairly, you know, I'm all right. Certainly with the ones that I use as well at home. Um, but uh, from a from a video perspective, I don't really have a clue. It's fitting that we're talking about this, though, because one of the um, treats for myself uh, way back when, when I um, left my place of employment, when I said goodbye to Apple, um, was uh, getting an iPhone 10. Oh. And the camera on this thing is ridiculous. Yes, but I've been, I was seeing the as well event. I know we're going to talk about a lot. I saw the uh, photos that you posted from Tor, the Chapel Choir Tour, mm. and the, it is amazing what that thing can do. Yeah, it's incredible. It's just, it's with, with with having the kind of the two the two lenses on the back, the the things you can do, and the and the phone is so clever anyway. It just does what you want it to. It it, it kind of sees what kind of a shot you're trying to do, and they go, oh yeah, okay, this is fine. Um, let me you know let me let lend a kind of a helping hand but it's just blown me away and the same because it's the 10 and it uses face id rather than touch id um it's got a it's it's got way more cameras in the front as well i think it's got about four um which means that the kind of the selective you know being able to kind of like blur that background and just throw emphasis onto the foreground of of a photo Mm. in portrait mode it can do with both the rear and the front camera um, but I'm so glad I had it with me for, for France and Rome because I've, I've taken some amazing pictures. And Yes, because you've been a busy uh, boy. So, we, we, you know, we, we should, mm. we obviously kind of joked about it a little bit at the start. We haven't done an episode for a couple of weeks. As we, I think we did say, didn't we, that we, we were both going to take mm. some weeks off because you were traveling, I was traveling. Um, I mm. went to Jersey for my parents' Pearl wedding anniversary, which was 30 years together. Oh, which was very nice. And, and um, Pixel Girl came too. We had a lovely time on Jersey. Um, and you have been away, along with Pixelcon, actually, for one of them, on tour where? Well, we were in France first, down in, we flew into Limoges, and then kind of dabbled in, in, in and around Limoges. So we sang at places such as uh, Salon, uh, Salon La Tour, which was lovely, uh, Rocamador, which was unbelievably beautiful, Um kind of all, all over, they kind of uh, kind of zigzagged across, I think, is it, is it the Dodoin Valley? Right. Um, which is which is near where kind of Rockmador is, I think. That, that's tenuous, but yeah, something like that. Um, and it yeah, it was fantastic, really, really good. We were absolutely blessed with the weather. We've kind of Europe's been having this um this heat wave. Yes. Yeah. Um, so it's just been absolutely gorgeous. Um, but France was brilliant. It was lovely to kind of like see folks again. Tint kind of tinged with sadness, obviously, because it's the last time for for for, for those who are kind of for, for those who are leaving. The choir, whether they're graduating or just kind of moving on, I think you know I'm I'm, I'm not graduating until next year, but but I'll it, it, I'll be starting at the cathedral, so that's kind of one of the last things I'll do for me. Fortunately, there's still graduation uh, the ceremonies, but you know it's not really the same as like a proper tour, a last tour. Mm. So, but it was yeah, it was really lovely. And then immediately after that, I flew back into uh, London Stansted and had about two days, two and a half days to um, 
to crash at a friend's house, try and get all of my stuff watched, washed, which uh, thankfully I was allowed to use their washing machine, which was very, very kind of Amelia, Amelia Murphy and her folks. It was very kind indeed. Um, I stayed with her and then we flew off to Rome with Exeter University Singers to do our tour there, which was even more kind of incredible, I think, certainly because the, from a musical perspective, both tours were great. Um, but obviously with uh, with Chapel Choir, I'm not the conductor, whereas with Ex University Singers, I am. So it's a kind of, a, it's, I think it's a much more kind of intimate experience for me because I, you know, I was being able to perform and conduct in some of the most amazing buildings, one of which I had a complete kind of meltdown. Um, I didn't realise that there was one particular basilica in Rome called... Oh, here we go. Let me <laughs> I can't help it. you with this. You were the only one that was there. Um, Basilica di Santa Maria Maggiore. Um, now I knew I wanted to go there because that is the that's the first basilica, the first kind of major place that Palestrina, back when he was a chorister, applied to to be a chorister there. And then he, he ended up staying on. Um, I think he was director of music for a bit, and then he kind of then he kind of moved on. But that's where he he kind of spent most of his life as a as a musician. So cool. Um, and I was like, oh, that'd be really cool. And it's the most, it's the most kind of grand, amazing, classic, no, just what you'd expect from a uh, Roman Catholic uh, mm. church. Um, it's actually not just a church, though. It's called a, um, let's see. A super church. Well, it's basically, yeah, it's it's one of the only churches that's allowed to, allowed to call itself a major church. Oh, right. Um, because of its, due, due to its kind of sheer size and, hang on. Um, is a papal major basilica. Um, so uh, a major basilica is the title given to the four highest ranking Roman Catholic church buildings, all of which are also papal basilicas. So it's, these are really amazing places. Um, you go inside and, and, and everywhere is it's all kind of covered in gold. And this was the first gold that was brought to Europe by Christopher Columbus. And it's just incredible. Anyway, I, I said to myself, oh, you know, when we get some free time, which we we fortunately had, oh, I'm going to go there and, you know, see if I just can have a wander around. What I didn't realise was the first concert, the first, well, concert, the first service we were doing was a mass in that building. Oh, doesn't get any better than and I got that, to really, con- does it? Yeah, and I got to conduct in the, and I was just, oh, man, it was, I had a complete kind of nerdy moment. There's a photo of me standing in front of, like, the high altar with my copy of the, um, the Palestrina Missa Attorney Christy Monero, which is a gorgeous little mass um and yeah i just completely lost it and every venue we went to be it for a concert or a service um were all fantastic the people were so friendly the weather again was amazing i've never been to rome so for a you know for a classicist it was just incredible the Colosseum was very cool but the roman forum blew my mind that it was just you know that was incredible i got to stand outside the building of the state i think it might be Oh, is it the Temple to Venus or something? Either way, it's the it's the it's the steps where Mark Anthony came out and gave the famous Friends Roman Country. Oh wow, you know, yeah, immortalized by Shakespeare. But that's where he gave when he said that you know Caesar's just been killed, um, and you you get yeah, and you're standing there, and that's where it happened, and it was just it was amazing, absolutely amazing. Wow, I mean, I, I was very I, I was incredibly jealous of um of, of Chapel Tour. I mean. Obviously, the, the singers is its own beast. I've never been in the university singers, um, but it, mm. it, I, I mean, looking judging by the uh, again incredible pictures um, and and the stories that I've seen on Facebook uh, from people in the choir, it just looks like so much fun. I mean, yeah, yeah, it was really because like, the other thing I should probably say is that whilst you were in France, I was in Portugal, so I was at a um, a conference uh, hosted by the European Central Bank. I was making a couple of videos which are mm. out on my channel. Um, and um, yeah, I'm not actually sure how much I'm allowed to talk about it because it's out. There, there were some things which happened behind the scenes, which just probably just to be safe, I won't talk about. Um, which it was a it was a very interesting experience going to this conference and being in this mm. room with like Draghi, who's the head of the of European Central Bank, who was listed by Forbes. I later learned as like one of the ten most influential people in the world, um, and like the second greatest leader in the world after Obama, I think. Um, and like, you know, the bank, I was talking, we were having lunch and this guy got up and was like, all right, so I got to go. I got to pick up the head of the bank of Japan from the, from the airport. And it's like, oh, okay. That's, that's, that's how we're playing this. And like, you've, you've you never yeah. known luxury until you've stayed in a hotel, which has uh, an automatic door that opens at the front gates and a man who opens it for you, his job 
God. was he saw you coming but like good morning sir and then would wave his hand in front of the door <laughs> like to open it for you it might be the best job ever i know right oh it was because it, it was a um a ritz carlson it was this i mm. looked up the rooms i was like oh maybe maybe pixel and i could come here and the no we cannot um mm. like the suites were like three thousand euros a night it was mm. outrageously expensive um, but ve- very very nice Portugal was lovely I got to see a little bit of the country but then I, I came um, straight home to the new house that, that Pixel Girl and I have and we yeah how's that going yeah it's, all settled it's all, it's all sorry we'll talk about we'll talk about this photographer dude in a second um, it's all it's all <laughs> coming together we actually had our sofa delivered the other day so now I Ooh, very exciting. in a very in a display I think of fantastic manliness I uh, I mounted I wall mounted whoa, a, whoa uh, careful a television yeah, oh, you wall mounted okay right well, I, I drilled <laughs> I drilled into the wall <laughs> so, uh, several large holes um, uh, with with a, with with a power drill which is not a nickname oh, for right. my penis um, and uh, yeah so, so like I, I, I drilled into the, we had like a brick fireplace and um, mm. so we have a, we bought a TV which I think was pretty cheap actually considering it's a four K like. 40 inch tv um oh, nice. it wasn't actually that much um and yeah we, we so, so mounted that on the wall and i'm still waiting for the inevitable clatter and crash of it just mm. falling off the wall which i'm frank i'm honestly amazed it hasn't happened yet so we've got the, yeah. we've got tv we've got uh the sofa um sofa bed for when guests such as yourself should come to visit um we Very also exciting. just yesterday built a bookcase so I, we now finally have a bookcase, so that all the crates of my books aren't just under the uh, the, the stairs. Um, mm. And um, yeah, like it's all basically together now. Like I think the, there's like a few little things. I need a little bit more storage in my office because there's just a pile of crap that's been on the wall, the, the floor for like two months. Um, mm. But yeah, that's coming together actually. It's all God. It's like I feel very adult, you know. Mm, I feel. You can imagine. I feel so so adult. Like buying my my lovely girlfriend a wonderful present. And you know us going to London for the day, and then coming back to our house, sitting on our sofa to watch Love Island on our TV. Um, yeah, I think the thing that the thing that got me when I first moved into Willow Walk, which was I think about it was a three or four weeks before you did, because you were still finishing off some kind of get, getting your stuff together before it yes, came over here. Yeah. When it re- when I really felt adulty was when during kind of in winter time. When you're kind of you're kind of like you're packing it in for the day, you've you've had some you've had some kind of stew cooking through the day, and it's kind of been you know, like permeating every kind of corner of the house um, with its stewiness. And then as that's kind of all gone, you you eat that, you go to you you kind of wash everything up, and then you draw the curtains, and that's the moment for me. I had this like this overwhelming line of like, oh wow, this is really like I kind of know what I'm doing. <laughs> and by that time, obviously, because we moved in and I moved in in the summer. Um, I would have had time to pay bills and make sure that the council tax was all sorted. And, you know, you have all these little things that you need to get done. Mm. Um, it was really surreal. Yeah, yeah. Like, well, I mean, well, I'm so I'm glad I'm glad everything's going. Yeah. Well. It's uh, so far like uh, now's the point where it's this month is when I absolutely need to like really finish off the, the thesis. Like I actually I went to what was fun was I went to the local library um, and I haven't been to a like local council library for quite a while mm. because I've, at Oxford, obviously, I didn't need to, and at Exeter, I didn't need to because there's another great library. But it was just really nice to go in. There's like a very community. There was like a person whose job it was to help older people with computers, and there was uh, like a large kids section. They always had events for children and getting them into reading. It was really sweet. But um, I went to the library the other day to, to. How much time did you spend in the kids section? Oh, a good couple of hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. actually, when we were yes. in London, um, we did pop into a bookshop because basically Pixel Girl au paired for some children in uh, Spain uh, a couple of years ago and mm. stayed in contact. I've seen them several times since and get, really gets on with the family. And she was thinking of buying them a present. And uh, we were just mm. in this bookshop in the children's section for a, a long time just like enjoying ourselves way too much <laughs> like yeah. uh, being like oh we could get the book about dinosaurs let's choose one um or oh <laughs> look at this pop up book about london now, i found myself reading like a book literally intended for 2 year olds where like you would press a button uh, it was like going, it was all about going on the tube and they had a button that you pressed and it oh, was right. like mind the gap and then oh turn the yeah, page nice. um so yes i am i am still a child in many many respects um i remember just just as you said pop up books then i used to, my favorite all time favorite book i had when i was a kid i think it's still at the house cuz mum's put aside all of our kind of 
certainly for me, um, because Joe and Ollie then use mine, but kind of um, your childhood books and toys and things in a big box. Mm. So if and when somebody in our family, my myself or my brothers, whichever one has them has kids first, they'll have some stuff for the for the for the kid. But it was this. It was a pop up Thomas the Tank Engine book. Oh. You open the first page, and in a little thing that looked kind of like a um, like the like the sidings, um, you would take out a two dimensional. Well, starts off as two dimensional Thomas that completely was removed from the book, and then you could pop him up put the book down and he would drive through the book uh, over each page and there would be like bridges that would come out and over and a big viaduct and then you could put him onto a turntable and the whole turntable would spin and you could make him go through tunnels and it was unbelievable it you're was so cool. animated about that that was adorable <laughs> oh man I, I mean i was a, i was such a thomas Same. i was kid. i was a hunk like i, I remember yeah. i had the wallpaper i had my, my first bedroom yeah, was me wallpaper. too and we had the yeah. we had a fold down model railway i had i had as in like a little double o gauge electric ones with like i had thomas mm. i think we had percy we had annie and clarabelle i always wanted like an yeah. edward or a gordon but like that was a bit that was yeah, a bit yeah. much you know Sorry, I, inter- I interrupted your stream of your... your so yeah, anyway, with, anyway I was writing my PhD thesis. As you do. Yeah, so I went, to, I went to the local library to um, like do some work on it, basically. Because like, this is the month when I need mm. to submit it again um, for, sort of for the examiners to say, yeah, you've done what we've, we've asked of you. And I've rewritten a large part of the chapter that, that was sort of the, in, in question. Um, and now there's just a few... Uh, there's a few bits of analysis that I want to do to convince myself, but that's nearly there. But like that's the that's the thing that's yeah. hanging over me at the moment. And then obviously like there's this constant uh, hum of work and all these potential videos in the work in the in the works and people uh, like Hat Films who I've been emailing and I may may potentially be doing something with them this month, um, which they were very they, they seem very um, keen on actually. So really quite excited about that actually. Um, yeah, and then also, yeah, um, uh, potentially going off to Germany to film some videos. Um, oh, whereabouts? Oh, Brennan. Or can you not I say? I think it's Brennan. Yeah. I, I, I shouldn't say, just in case it, it falls flat on its ass. I, I won't yeah. say what it is. But yes, that that's happening. Yeah, there's there's lots of adult things are happening. And I'm, I'm very, like, I, I feel actually now like I'm an independent video producer, like, properly now. Yeah. Which is, which is cool. And my um, my silver play button is arriving this week. I should probably mention that Ooh. sooner. Yeah, I, um, I finally had a notification from YouTube saying, oh, sh- we should have given you one of these by now. Um, yeah. And I was like, yeah, you really should. I'm nearly at 150K. Um, so, yeah, they're, email- they're emailing. They're, they're snail mailing me a um, uh, the, the silver plaque this week, which is so oh, tremendously wow. exciting. Well, the, the most exciting piece of post I got was I had a letter through the... Here is said letter, Ooh. in case Ooh, you doubt it. ASMR. Me. Uh, from Her Majesty's, Her Majesty's uh, Revenue and Customs. And I was like, oh no, here we go. Uh, and the the letter reads, Dear Mr. Daniel John Moore, and then goes on to talk about my national insurance numbers and various letters that I should have received. And I was getting a bit worried at this point because I thought, oh crap, maybe it's got something to do with my P45 because I've just left Apple and they're going to be like, ha, ah, I'm going to yeah, tax, yeah. tax you, you f-. <laughs> But it says tax calculation for the year 6th of April to the 5th of April. You have paid too much tax. Oh, we owe you, and then they, yeah, they owe me about two hundred quid, which is awesome. Oh, amazing! That's the best kind yeah, of letter. So I'm gonna, yeah, I'm going to be getting that through soon, which is which is rather lovely. Um, it's quite nice. I'm in, I'm in this kind of weird. I've had such a busy time with kind of wrapping up the end of the academic term, and then going straight on to France, and then going straight on to Rome, and then I had a couple of days at home, and then a couple of days in London when I went and watched the football in a in a. Pub in like which is coming which home is it's coming home which is com- it's, it's so coming, coming home. home oh my god i'm gonna go and watch the game later today um but i have this i'm in this kind of weird zone of i came back down into exeter and i've got a couple of days where i haven't really needed to do a great deal i've kind of been pottering around the house and getting everything clean and tidy um as as dan tends to do um but then i've got graduation ceremonies and then Im- immediately as they finish i have to fly up on a train via Oxford to Cambridge because I need to go and pick up my glasses. Oh, snap my glasses. Did I tell you about this? No, you didn't say this. Oh, yeah. So the day before I was due to fly out to Rome. Um, now, f- for kind of a little more information to, f- to readers who might not know, but you've probably guessed, I wear glasses all the time. I don't wear them, obviously, when I sleep, but I need them for everything in my day to day. And I've I have done since I was about four. I don't think. 
I had, I went through a phase of wearing them, but they're just a bit of a faff. And I think because I've worn glasses for so long, I was just like, yeah. oh, sod it. You know, I, I just much rather wear the glasses. Anyway, I got up on the morning before we were due to leave. Um, uh, it was an early Sunday morning and I was actually going to sing uh, Eucharist at a friend's church. Um, and I had my shower, I came out, kind of, kind of came out and then I picked up my glasses off the, the bedside table. And as I always do in the morning, I give them a good clean in the morning and then they basically stay fine throughout the day. Um, anyway, I went to clean them and whether it's been a combination of the amount of sun that I've been having, or maybe something in the, the kind of sun cream that I put on my face, that's worn down the plastic, I cleaned them and with the kind of gentlest feather light touch, because I know how to clean glasses I have done since I was like four, they completely snapped in half right the way down the kind of the, oh. the nose bridge. So that I was completely fucked, um, to, yeah. to use a technical term. Um, I, I had to, I ended up kind of temporarily, um, wrapping some, you know, like getting like a, 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 a fabric plaster and, oh, t- and taping full, them together. You went full Harry Potter. Absolutely. Oh, it was ridiculous. But I was really stressed because I was like, well, this isn't going to hold at all. These aren't, they're not Specsavers glasses. So I can't just go to Specsaver and ask them to pop the, pop the lenses into a new frame because they, they, they probably, mm. you know, it's a custom frame. Um, and I need my glasses to like seal the music I'm meant to be conducting. And, you know, so I was really stressed. Yeah, yeah kind of a big oh, deal. Man. Yeah. So, but anyway, what ended up happening was um, I was very, you know, I managed to find a spec savers and I went through and had a chat and I explained to them what had happened. In fact, this is like this, this is now going to be an official shout out to spec savers for being amazing. I went through and I said, look, I know this, the kind of the likelihood of you being able to help me is incredibly slim, but this is what's happened. And I explained that they've snapped. I'm meant to be going away to conduct a load of music and I'm a bit stressed because if I can't see the music, I'm you know, it's not going to go well. Um, and they said, okay, don't worry, that's fine. Let's have a look. And we we must have gone through maybe 20 different frames. And she took each set one by one and tried to see how close they were. And on the 20th set, which is one that I just before I was leaving, oh. I was like, oh, could you try these ones just to see because they look quite a similar shape. She said, yeah, okay, that's fine. She took them away. She came back beaming and said, yeah, they've gone in. They've, you know, the, they're, they're the right fit. It's like, oh, thank God for that, which is brilliant because obviously if I had to get new lenses and frames, it would take weeks to order and it would also be very expensive. Um, but she took them away. She fit the new ones into the, the the lenses into these new frames that I've got at the moment, which I actually don't mind too much. Um, they're, they're, they're quite nice. Um, and as a kind of token of goodwill, because you're like, you, you know, we see you're very, you know, it's, it's been clearly very stressful and you hope that your tour goes well. She massively discounted them. So I ended up paying about £30. Oh, kiss it. A whole new, yeah. So a whole new set of frames. They fit them all for me. They fit the glasses for me. Um, so I now have these new ones, which I, what I didn't realise is there's a girl in the choir of singers who actually has exactly the same glasses as mine. Ah. So when we were going along, we had to be quite careful. We didn't both put them down somewhere because they are <laughs> exact. They're exactly the same. Um, but I was amazed that they managed to they managed to kind of sort that out for me. Yeah. Um, but my new, yeah, my new, my kind of normal glasses, the ones that you would have seen me in for most years, um, they've just arrived in Oxford. So I'm going to go and pick those up and then go to Cambridge and then do these rehearsals with Homerton and then go away to go on, on tour with them and tour, then come back. A third then, of the summer. F- it's just been such a busy, you know, it's, it's, I think the trick is there's not quite enough time in between each one to fully just disengage. And because it because I'm going away with a different choir that I don't know, I got the music list the other day, and it's we're taking some really cracking music, and the, I know the vast majority of it. The VN is is one of the things you're doing, isn't it? Absolutely. Oh. Yeah. Uh, and then I think Bird Four or Bird Five, just c- for fun. Mm. Um, Brewer in D, the Leighton responses, um, a load of early kind of Palestrina stuff, which is obviously a, a, a win and, in and, my and book. And you're going to Prague, is that right? I think so. Right. Yeah. Well, it says it. Yeah, it says. Um, Czech Republic so I think we're in Prague for most of it but we may be venturing out on some days a little further afield but it should be really fun so much as I've enjoyed tour chat we should probably mm. guide this back around to the photographer um because we, we, we were just like oh there's this amazing dude he was a managing director he's got a degree in maths he's a photographer he's won all these awards yeah now let's talk about our lives um yeah is there, are there any gaps in our understanding of him that we should sort of you know push forward a little bit I don't think so. I mean, to be honest, everything I'd said and then the, the kind of the, the, the tidbits that you just repeated, I think is as much as we can get back to him. Everything else is, is you know, that, well, there, there isn't a great deal that I, I missed, to be honest. It's all just about 
uh, he oh well he did an exhibition uh, in Mumbai in India 2012 in November called The Other Side the Gallery of Art and Soul and he did a group exhibition in uh, 2011 in uh, in London oh. called Articulate 2011 an ex- an exhibition of contemporary photography ah oh. it's interesting so see so, yeah, and he's yeah. still active like he's he's still in the middle of his career he is yeah yeah he's still uh, he's still going which is good wow well, what dude? I mean, I feel like I feel like I'm gonna to have to check him out. Obviously, because I don't look at the article when you have one in the podcast. Afterwards, yeah. I'm gonna to have to check this guy out because like, it's difficult to talk about photography in a podcast without, you know, <laughs> without it being a visual medium. Well, shall we pop on over to Critics Corner then? So we don't we, we don't want another marathon like last time. Yes, let's. That's a good idea. All right, all right, all right. So, what do you have to criticize this? Well, I have a few things to contribute. This um, this episode because obviously it's been a little while, um, but I have a th- okay. few things to talk about. Well, I think given if you've got a, if you've got a few things because I to be I to be honest don't have a great deal just purely because there's been so many other things going on. I haven't really been doing anything, YouTube or filmy or TVE at all. So you 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 well, kick us well, off. On the and subject I'll, I'll, I'll of think. TVE, um, I have uh, I I, was, I mean basically I feel like I've been wasting my Netflix. Uh, subscription because we recently upgraded because we got a 4k mm. tv we upgraded to the ultra hd package it's like another two pounds a month so it's like it's either nine or ten pounds a month which i don't yeah. use that much pixel girl uses more than i do um but in an effort yeah. to kind of get more out of it i just sort of thought yeah let's let's start going through my list of things that i added and then completely forgot about and um i started watching the expanse which i don't know if you've seen or heard anything about I think I may have seen the trailer, but I certainly haven't watched it. So, um, The Expanse is it's based on a series of novels, which I may end up reading, uh, because I really like the show. Um, a set in the... I'm going to I'm gonna get torn apart here if I get the century wrong. In my head, it's the 24th century. Um, but I will just double check. Yeah, okay, more than 200 years in the future. So let's say 24th century. Um Humanity has colonized the solar system, and there are three kind of powers. And there's the old Earth, there's Mars, and then there's the asteroid belt. And um, Mars is dependent on resources from the asteroid belt, and notably water. Um, water mm. mining, well, ice mining from places like Saturn that gets brought back to the asteroid belt, and then it goes on to Mars. And there's been this rising tension between Mars and Earth. Um, and the asteroid belt. The, the, there's the this terrorist organization in the asteroid belt that wants independence for, for them. Um, and Mars is sort of this ascendant power that wants to break free of the Earth. And what happens at the start of the series is, because there's three seasons so far, I'm, I'm halfway through the first one, is there's just something, something happens that destabilizes the balance between, you know, the, the, the factions, and it looks like war is about to break out. And mm. it's very much like Firefly, um okay in in that it's a very human character driven grounded sci-fi like hard sci-fi um right harder sci-fi than um firefly because there's no psychic abilities there's no fast and light travel um it's it's just you know very kind of not, not quite kitchen sink but you know very very grounded gritty humans in space and it's just really well done it's 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 like the production values are great um it's it's not it was just picked up by amazon that was it yeah because it was cancelled by sci-fi who originally did it i was gonna say it was picked up by netflix but no it was just picked up by amazon but it's like God, they're throwing a lot of money at things aren't they amazon yeah because they just they bought these rights for the Lord of the Rings. Yes, TV which is going to be the most expensive uh, TV. A billion, isn't it? Yeah, uh, it's it's a, well, it's Amazon. Come on, they they have. I mean, true, but I mean, if it even so, a billion dollars for a TV show. Yeah, it's going to be. That's pretty insane. Yeah, so I'm, 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 oh, that sounds good. What, what did you say it was called? The Expanse. Um, the Expanse. And, and they're okay. fifty minute ep- odd episodes, um, and hmm. they're. Yeah, I've I highly recommended. I've 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 really okay. really enjoyed them. And yeah, I I'm still halfway through the first season, so the story mm. isn't completely clear to me. But uh yeah. like so far it's been what it's been actually a, a little bit um uh, not Darwin. Uh it's it's been a bit like uh Dickens in obviously he serialized his stories and you know mm. like in my head it's like great expectations where like um 
Pip tries to leave the old family home and then a soldier barges through at the end of the chapter and it's like, oh, whoa there, mm. son. And then it's like, oh, I've mm. got to keep reading to the next chapter. Um, yeah. You know, just like, every, not every episode, but a, a, a lot of the episodes do end on really quite good cliffhangers. But, but cliffhangers that kind of make sense in the story and aren't, you know, like, at the start of the next episode, it's always a case of, oh, that's a thing that happened. Like, okay, let's let's yeah. roll with that. Um, but uh, did you watch? Did you, you didn't watch Dickensian on BBC One a couple of years ago? Did you? No, no, I didn't. I, I, I've... That's really. I think that's on Netflix. That's that's well worth watching. It's kind of like a mashup of all of his stories into one big. Uh, right. You get all you know, like all, they, all of the all of these kind of quintessential characters, like like Pip from Great Great Expectations and characters from Oliver Twist and um, uh, David. No, David Copperfield. I thought that was a stage musician. Yeah, what am I thinking of then? Uh, or is it a book as well? Search C- Copperfield Dickens. David Copperfield book. Yes, it is a book. It's it's just also oh, a stage musician. The stage. Mu- yeah, I, was, I had a moment of insanity there. Yeah, but they they all come together in 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 and in London. So you get you know Bill Sykes having a go at. Oh right, I don't know, Scrooge. Who's having a go? It's really really well done. Oh cool. Um, and it's got a cracking like cast. A, so if you, yeah, that's the Avengers thing. of Dickens basically. Mm. I'd say, actually I'd save it for Christmas if you're going to if you're going to have some stuff to kind of like as a as a, a thing that you always watch with oh, Liv right. uh, or any of our readers if you want if you've got a if you've got a uh, a festive friend that you usually meet up with <laughs> festive and, friend uh, sounds like a dream I... <laughs> like, yeah oh, granny's over there with a festive friend <laughs> yeah. it's just a, a, it's a pint of gin that's what it is yeah it's just neat gin yeah um, incidentally whilst googling that the uh, David Copperfield the magician his real name is David Seth Kotkin of course it is. Kotkin's just quite an unusual name, I thought. I don't know yeah. where that, that surname comes from. Um, but uh, yeah, so that, that basically, I've been watching The Expanse. It's very good. I would recommend it to anyone who likes Firefly um, mm. and who likes, yeah, realistic sci-fi. It, it reminds me um, in tone of the Ian M. Banks novels uh, mm. that, I've, that I've read. Well, that I've it's only considered Phlebas, actually, that I've read, but it, it feels very thematically kind of consistent with mm. that. Um, okay. Yeah, I, I've really, really enjoyed it. And yeah, so I, I, I watched that and I watched a, a documentary about Aardman the other day on Netflix. Um, oh, nice. Which was, which one was that it, called? I think it's just... is it? No, I'm thinking of the Pixar story. Uh, hang on, Aardman Netflix. Um, I it, think it was, I've seen that one. It was narrated by... Yeah, A Grand Night In, that was it. It's narrated yes, by Julie yeah, Walters. Yeah. Uh, which is a little bit... It was a little bit frustrating because it only spent like two minutes on Chicken Run. Yeah. Which is, of all the things that Aardman have done my absolute favorite i was just hoping for a little bit more detail but now have you seen whatever. the trailer for or seen the film of um early man that's the most recent one no i i still haven't no um, nor have i i saw it, it came it's now available to rent on apple apple um movies because i still um, haven't seen scientists and adventures with scientists i haven't seen that either um which was the one with hugh grant and david tennant in it and uh uh, it, yeah, it was, it was based. Uh, that was based on a series of books as well. It was children's books, um, and it was a couple of years ago. And then they also did Arthur Christmas and Flushed Away, which I haven't seen either. I've of seen those. Flushed Away. I've seen Arthur Christmas. Flushed Away is not bad, but it, they're not. They weren't true um, stop motion. Uh, no, no, no. That was that was full CG animation. Yeah, yeah. which is a bit um, of a shame, really. But there you go. So yeah, so yeah, I'm, I'm a huge fan of Arman. I used to want to be an animator. I, used to, I, I did an animation club at school. Uh, we used to do claymation and paper animation. Um, which is really, really fun. So, yeah, I watched that. And then, well, actually, that's, that's a point. What else do I have on my list? Because, yeah, I'm determined to make the most, get my money's worth out of this Netflix subscription that's been ticking away in the background. Because, um, yeah, Pixel get, gets a lot out of it. I've, I've given a, a login to my mum. I don't know how much she's watched yet. I, mm. I'm sure that if she gets into it, she will destroy, you know, absolutely annihilate the subscription. Yeah. Um, but, hang on, where's my, where's my list? On my list, I have Luke Cage. Have you seen that? Nope. Planet Earth Two, which I still haven't seen yeah. a couple of episodes of. Actually, I need to. I need to make sure I watch that. Uh, Star Trek: The Next Generation, yeah. which is just it's amazing. The one that you had recommended to me, Abstract: The Art of Design. That's really good. You'll really like that. Um, House of Cards, which I'm. I got three seasons in. Awesome. Um, uh, I don't know if I really want to go back to that now. It has somewhat been tinged by. Um, I think Kevin I'd Spacey. happily watch the whole thing again. Yeah, I shouldn't let it's it... It's just such a, like, you know, amazing performance. Again, I mean, we've had this debate before about how how do you separate the art from the artist? Um, like, yeah, I, sh- I, I see what you mean. I should be able to. Yeah, should be able be able to. Um, there's also, uh, interesting in here, I still have Bright, which after what I watched Ooh. an amazing video essay by Lindsay Ellis. 
yes. who uh, is one of my favourite video essayists on YouTube. She's so good. Did she do a lot with The Hobbit? Yes, she did. Yes, um, I've, seen, I've seen a lot of her stuff. She is excellent. Uh, and uh, probably my weird YouTube crush, I think. Like she's, yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, she actually, I think, might be joining the agency that I'm part of, which is terribly exciting. Um, so I don't know. Not that I'll ever get to work with her because we're so, so such different fields, but whatever. But yeah, she tore Bright apart in terms of world building. Um, mm. So I might have to watch it to see how bad it is. And then I've also got The Big Short, which I still haven't seen. I've not seen The Big Short or Spotlight. There was that year when there were fantastic oh, Hollywood yeah. productions. Yeah, I haven't seen The... Oh, no. Now, The Big Short... What's that about? Is that the bankers? That's the, that's the financial crisis. There was one where I did the scene, uh, the Margot Robbie scene uh, in a vlog recently. Oh, I have seen it. No, I have. It's excellent. Yeah. I, I I regularly watch or will just put on in the background Spotlight because that I think that's a uh, that's just an absolute masterpiece of, of filmmaking. Yeah. I, 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 I really want to watch it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, what you should add to that list because it's just it's recently come on um, uh, Death at a Funeral. Oh, now which one? Because uh, is this something that there's been a few versions of? Yeah, the Americans tried to do one. Yeah. And it, well, I mean, it comes back to that debate about, you know, the differences between British and American humour. American yeah. humor. The American one's very much more kind of slapstick based, which I'm sure if you like that kind of thing, it's quite good. But the the, 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 the British kind of original, um, I rewatched it the other day and it's, Christ, it's funny. <laughs> okay like it's re- like really kind of that classic british kind of you know really kind of black sense of humor um but it's it oh god it's re- it's really funny um i mean i to be honest there's so much in this list i forgot that i populated it so much like i've still got beasts of no nation in here warrior uh dallas buyers club propaganda game fargo cabin in the woods um 13. i've been getting really into horror more than usual really yeah, so in the course of one day before, I think this is a couple. This may have been the kind of the day after my last exam or something. Sometime before I left um, for uh, for tour, I watched uh, the Conjuring, the Conjuring Two, and Annabelle all in one go. Oh my god, are you all right? And it was <laughs> awesome. There's another. There's, there's one on. There's there's a there's a horror film on Netflix that I'm really keen to watch um, called Don't Breathe, and it's these these teenagers who break into the house of a blind man and. They, they oh. this blind, it turns out it was meant to be like an easy. He was very wealthy yeah, and he was going to steal this stuff, but they can't. And that looks properly terrifying. I also watched. Uh, it's not it, now. There's going to be another. The Conjuring Two um, has this whole thing about this nun, the evil being or power or supernatural thing, or kind of within it is this this nun thing. I forget her name. I think it begins with an A, but you can't say it because you'll she'll appear. So oh. I better not. It's like how if you say loyal three times in a mirror, Georgia from Love Island appears. That's a shout out yeah, to absolutely. everyone who watches Love Island. But there's another one coming out, which is called I think it might be called the the the, the nun or something or or whatever her name is, um, and that looks genuinely terrifying. And both of the films were even by my standards. I I'm, I'm really into horror and thrillers mm. less so much whenever i call it a horror film i think of gore so I, i'd rather go with thriller as a genre yeah, yeah. um but something that really really just properly scares you um because i find it very easy just to as soon as the film ends i'm like okay well that's the end of that's the end of that now like I, you know i can i can walk away it doesn't stay with me mm. um which is i think why a lot of people are put off by those thrillers um but there's meant to be some really really good ones coming out so that's quite exciting. Something that would be, actually is a, a never-ending nightmare would be to watch, um, and I am tempted to, given recent events, uh, The Thick of It. I've just finished it. Because uh, I think if I was to watch it, it's, it, there is no boundary now between, oh, I've, st- I've finished watching The Thick of It, let's just check the news. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just become reality. Yeah. Everything is an yeah, it's amazing. absolute cluster. Malcolm fire. Tucker might be one of the best written characters ever, because he's, he's just... He's, his proficiency with with kind of and with expletives is just incredible. Yeah, there's the there's one thing where he's running he's running to a taxi because uh, he needs to get away from the press really quickly, and he jumps in this taxi, and the taxi driver doesn't start driving because he's like, oh, what are you doing? You know, and he's like, he says, uh, I'm going to obviously have to paraphrase, but he says basically, if you don't start driving up now, I'm going to grab that reader and shove it so so far up your ass, you'll be able to find the price of your next, <laughs> which is pretty good, really. It's amazing. There's, there's been some amazing gifts It's, it's, gi- uh, gifts shared it's from... Armando Iannucci, I didn't realise. Yeah, 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 because he did that. And then he also yeah. did Death of Stalin recently, which I've been meaning to watch. That's really good. Very funny. 
oh god i just need to find time to watch this stuff like mm. i'm just uh well hopefully yeah once i finally put this thesis to bed and i i'm at like a full-time video producer i can do what tom um tom scar does in his vlogs and just watch a bunch of shit all the time because mm. it's research you know um i have been watching a lot of youtube to be fair like I, I also we should we should actually mention um this is the this week is the 10th anniversary of the yogs cast it is. is happy birthday happy birthday yogs cast um it was I, I don't know if you've seen what they've been putting out this week uh well there was a uh a yog pod yeah no, they, they did funny. a trucking tuesday and yes they did, i haven't seen that uh, one they yet. did a minecraft uh adventure map oh, amazing uh, and it's just I watched a bit of their stream where they were re-watch- they rewatched old videos and all that kind of stuff. And I just as yeah. a as a group of creators, they're just great. I really really like the Ogs cast. Um, you know, they've done a lot of good for the world. So you know, hats off. Ten years on YouTube is a long time, and uh, they, mm. yeah, they've. They've, they've, they've really done it. They pulled it out of the bag, your cast. So happy birthday! I've been I've been watching a lot of their stuff. Um, actually, I suppose it hasn't even that much stuff. What was the what was the last kind of big thing I binged? I don't even know. I suppose actually I haven't been watching that much YouTube really. Nor have I. I certainly, from a YouTube point of view, I haven't really watched anything at all, which has been quite nice. Mm. Um, I've been watching. Obviously, we had the new season of Pole Dark oh, on BBC course. One that started. Yeah. A while ago, which has been really good. I've been loving that. There was particularly, there's been some really good antiques roadshows, actually. Um, I, I caught up on one yesterday. such a used sentence. Sorry. I'm sorry, I know. Well, I mean, is anyone really surprised at this point? It's brilliant because on a, on a Sunday, you get Country File, Antiques Roadshow, and then Pole Dark, all back to back. And it's, it's bloody excellent. Anyway, yeah, the one that I caught up yesterday, the most recent one, the final thing that came up is that... Um, a lady had a first edition uh, dedication to the guy who was the inspiration for Elgar's um, uh, Enigma variations. And this, she had a first edition copy of Nimrod. Wow. Um, with all of his notes and things. And, she, and they were like, yeah, so each, each movement of, of Elgar's variations is dedicated to friends he knew. Mm. And you're meant to be able to identify the friend and, and, and eventually kind of uncover the, 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 the... You'd be meant to be able to solve Enigma. Um, by listening out for these little, there's little melodies dotted th- throughout each one that when you put them all together, you'll su- you're meant to finally understand the work, and it's still never been solved. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the the the, the person that that um, Nimrod was dedicated to, who was a very very famous publisher or editor at Novello, who Elgar really trusted, and this guy actually got Elgar to get keep writing because there was a stage in his life where he was just like actually you know what i don't think i want to do this it's, i don't feel right i've got no inspiration mm-hmm. and this guy got him back writing which is pretty amazing she had his copy and they wow. valued it and they were like yeah you're probably looking at like 100 150 pounds i'd say at least Whoa. like i was i'm surprised it's not more yeah well the thing it's you know it's it, it's very it's very dependent on who's there at the day and they yeah, yeah yeah it was it was really interesting I was, yeah paul dark's been good oh i got my vinyl I got my new vinyl in the post. Oh, of what? Of the new Milk Carton Kids album. Uh, oh, of course, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. Really good. Um, the album is titled All the Things That I Did and All the Things That I Didn't Do. Um, and it's got uh, 12 It's got twelve tracks on it. The final track, All the Things, uh, ellipsis, um, is just... Wow, like I'll 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 leave a we should we should leave a link to it in the show notes because that's a that's a stream of the entire album on YouTube, mm. but just listen to that particular song and it ah oh, it's just sublime it's really really good oh, so cool. I can highly recommend that I, I just I just had a look through my history and I I've just I've three channels that I, I'll give a shout out to that I've been watching a lot of like there's there's like five in a row for these guys um, Soviet Womble uh, who, who mm-hmm. recently uh, released uh, Random Armor Bullshittery Part Nine. Uh, which uh, which is like half an hour long, um, and then made me rewatch a whole bunch of his videos. I love how he edits. If you don't watch Soviet and you like gaming, sort your life out. Uh, Tier Zoo. I don't know if you've watched any Tier Zoo. This is this. No. Uh, he does biology videos as if the natural world is a game. Uh, is 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 a game, and so he talks about like the meta game and yeah. different animals having different stats. So the most recent video he did was you know there's that um, thing where it's like a grid of nine animals, and it's like pick two to defend you the rest are coming to get you uh and you know, yeah. it's like, and he did like the optimum configuration the optimum team and he has videos like our sharks op and it's is australia <laughs> like is the australia server um op and that kind of thing um really great like he's he's on a roll at the moment he's killing it and um yeah re- I, I've, I've chatted to him a bit actually he's a lovely guy um but yeah 
really rate him. And then also someone that I, I if you're not watching Dan, you really should actually is Patrick Willems, Patrick H. Willems. Um, yeah, he's this yeah. guy based in New York who's a filmmaker um, who does videos. Sometimes he he had a lot of success earlier on with um, what if x director directed y and it was like what if um wes anderson directed x-men and they did a trailer for the mm. film in the style of that director like but not with footage from the film as in he reshot the film in the style of that director um oh, and then wow. also recently he's been doing video a lot of video essays about like why mission impossible series is um underrated and why it's so great um what uh the only why which jurassic park sequel matters um and yeah. that kind of thing um really great guy we're about the same he's a bit bigger than me he's 180 just under 180,000 subscribers um but really really solidly made he knows what he's doing and he uses filmmaking techniques to make videos on youtube about films so he, he deserves mm. a bit more credit so i'll give i'd like to give him a bit of a shout out well in that case if you're i've got Go two it, yeah. that i'd like to shout out actually um that's one uh one channel music with miles um who does these really kind of these these short music, not so much tutorial, but kind of short lessons in particular. So like the one that I was watching the other day is modal interchange. Right. So taking a chord progression and then swapping. Um, so like a chord prog- prog- progression will typically have kind of like chords one, two, three, four within that particular key. Mm. Um, if you then change the mode of that key, so say instead of playing in um, Aeolian, you move it to Plagal or no, that's a, that's an, uh, a, <laughs> you're nearly on this. Oh, he's, that's he's a, put his neck what's on the word? line. Anyway, yeah, you you change the mode and then swap the chords out for each one. But the whole the whole video is set to music, so he so he can he actually demonstrates it as it's going. So you've got this really solid rhythm that he kind of goes along with, and then whenever he's demonstrating anything, he just seamlessly kind of like just adds whatever chord or progression he's talking about while he's. It's really well done. Like the actual oh, the, the, cool. kind of the production of it's fantastic. The other um, channel is up is not jump right which is it's this guy who the, the kind of the biggest videos he's done are looking at vr in games uh, so he's the, he's the one who's done all the kind of the fallout vr fallout 4 vr is an absolute nightmare skyrim vr is an absolute nightmare elite dangerous vr is an absolute nightmare and he just does they're really funny really like the editing in them is absolutely incredible huh. um but he's just he's hilarious uh, um, i actually have one of his things um Saved on my Reddit. I, I recognise the style. I have to check him out. Yeah, is the one where it's like the thing that it, in the trailers you often see on Facebook is and um, it's like I really love how it's how immersive it is because you start you actually start the game as a tap and if you twist your like because it all bugs out and it's just wrong but it, yeah they're they're really 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 very funny. Oh, cool. So those two that's many uh, no uh, up is not jump and music with miles. Well, shall we then move on over if we've exhausted? I went very west country then. Move on over. Um, mm-hmm. to our crisis corner absolutely let's do it top lad no we're not we're not we're not doing that we're getting in patreon corner aren't we dan because it's oh yeah because that's how that podcast this podcast works it's been so long that we've f- forgotten long. how our own podcast works uh sorry everyone <laughs> but uh yeah the, we're in patreon corner now and uh, would, you, would you want to explain dan yeah, so we're still kind of this 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 corner is so important, and we absolutely love giving kind of credit where credit's it's, due yeah, to the people yeah. who support us because without you, this podcast doesn't work. But equally, we feel like the while the skit kind of setup that we have is fun, it's it just never feels quite right, and it can sometimes be quite hard to try and get a skit to work with you know thirty thirty people. Um, so we're just we're going to go back to kind of vanilla Wikicast. We're going to read out our patrons, um, but if you have a suggestion as to how we can better structure this corner, how we can thank uh, you and, guys and how, better for, for these yeah, absolutely, um, because that, that you know that's the most important thing. Then please you know send us an email spongeelectric at gmail dot com and we'll see. Um, but for now, yeah, we're going to go back to vanilla Wikicast. Um, Simon, do you want to kick us off with our first patron? Uh, our first top lab patron is a new one actually Ben Dent thank you so much thank you Ben we also have Connor Levers Rory Healy I think that's also a new one isn't it no Rory's been with us for a, for a couple of months now I think yeah oh, actually, you ungrateful no, swine see. yeah too yeah yeah <laughs> um, uh, we also have don't you know the names uh, of your children <laughs> Marut for Vakira Punyawat no, you don't F- F- Fee Fi Fo Fum Gascoin Henry Brewster Lewis Watson 
Eric Davis, Billy Tolson, Elliot Conway, Ben McMurtry, and Ben McMurt Bush, his smaller brother. <laughs> yeah. um, David Scahill and David Skay Mountain, his larger brother. The moustache... M- I know, uh, anything I, any joke I make about this is going to be wildly inappropriate. I'm just going to go... Thank you, the moustache man. Thank you, Cameron. Habiba Amjad. Thank you, the one and the only, Dan Hanvey. Dan Hanvey, there he is. What a man, what a man. Hanvey's coming home. He's coming home. Dan Hanvey's coming, coming Dan home. Dan Hanvey's coming home. Lachlan Woods. John Pannion. And his <laughs> companion, John Mannion. Uh, Nick Webster. Luke Thatcher. Simon Torseth. Alex. No, I've got nothing. Greer. That's not his middle name. I just was trying to think of... So, that's not like a pretty shit nickname. Alex, I've got nothing. Greer. Geordie Eric's Eschenwald. I mean, Eschendal. Uh, niche. That was niche. Sean Connery showing appreciation. Matt Maguire. Jay Wright. Wonderful, Stephen. Tapio Kirkinen. Well, he hasn't been tentative for a while, but it only feels mm. right, you know? Mm-hmm. Davy Schram von Tobel and his and Transylvanian castle. <laughs> and Simon Vase. Oh, thank you so much, Simon. It's a fantastic name. And thank you so much to everyone who supports us. Like, it has been a few weeks. We appreciate the fact that you've born with us. We've, it's like taking our summer holiday, really, isn't it? But mm. our, pa- yeah. our Patreons never sleep. And uh, they, they, never have, do. they have been so fantastically generous. They are the reason this podcast is is uh, able to afford hosting. We also pay, uh, sorry, pay. We donate to the Wikimedia donation every month. Uh, as a thank you to Wikipedia for getting us through university. Um, And we do have an excess on top of that. And, you know, we are thinking of ways that we can use that excess, which has been building up. It has been building up. And um, we've had some ideas. I will talk to you actually after this episode, Dan. I think we need to start something rolling soon. Um, yeah, and we also have we've 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 got quite a good idea for when you're you're next down and next to soon, and I'll be up in Cambridge. So there is stuff in the pipeline. Yes. that we're ready to kind of implement. So yeah, it's very exciting. very very exciting. And also that's just our top lads, and there is a top lad spot available as of the time of recording. Uh, just just there is yeah, there. currently twenty nine out of thirty patrons. So should you like to get involved with the with the top lad kingdom, uh, there is a space available. So jump on to www.patreon.com forward slash the wikicast and follow the links that you'll find. But if five dollars a month is too rich for your blood then we also have the ongoing locked horns exchange between team dog and team cat and mm. dan would you like to relay and the news from the front i'd i'd love to relay the news yeah because just steaming ahead on 34 to 30 patrons it's team dog on 34 team cat on 30 congratulations team dog i told you slow and steady wins the race we'd get there in the end that's a that's a solid four four point lead uh, outstanding work Big, big love to all of you. Big steaming pile of lead. I mean, Team Cat, we are known for our apathy, for not caring or not appearing to care. We need to change that. We need to... For Team Cat's coming home, you know? We, 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 we need to bring it home. I just hit my microphone. I really hope you couldn't hear that. But Team Cat, if you would like to pledge your support by a dollar a month and steal the lead from those smug bastards over at Team Dog, then... Put your one dollar a month in under Team Cat, and let's bring it back. It's it's so unfair at the moment. We need to we need to get the, bring the balance to the force, mm. and our balance books. Top lad. So we find ourselves in Crisis Corner. Uh, we have uh, quite a few crises to get through actually, but our our crisis for today. Uh, through much deliberation, we've decided to go with Anonymous. Who emailed in to spongeelectric.gmail.com with the subject headline, Crisis Corner. Fantastic. Stuck that one in there. And they they go on to say, uh, Moin, guys. What? Sorry, I'm what? Moin? Moin. Moin. M-O-I-N. Moin, guys. Okay, whatever. Yes. Right. Moin, guys. I'm a listener from Germany. Please excuse any weird formulations or blatant mistakes on my part. English ah. isn't my strong suit. Well, you've managed to start the first word with a with, with something that's yeah. perplexed us, so well that done. That probably is an English um, word. And I'd really appreciate with, your, your help. English is so much better than ours that we don't know what it is. Yeah. Oh, it's German um, for hello. I never heard that. I thought that ah. was hello. Moin. Hello. Okay. I, I, I don't know. Moin. Hello. I, um, I suffer from a severe chronic depressive disorder, F33.2, uh, which went... I don't know how to say that word. R-A-P-E-N-D. Rapend? Ra- Rapend? Rap- R-A-P-E-N-D. I think it's not recognised as a word, so maybe it's a typo. I suffer from a severe chronic depressive disorder, which um, 
got worse when I started at university. Uh, so much so that I spent a significant part of my second math semester in hospital. It also makes it really hard for me to make friends. A really important part of, for finding value in my life uh, is to make stuff, especially replicas of clothing and woodwork cool. from medieval artwork. That's cool. Very cool, um, yeah. But I do not have any of the stuff I need this in, to do in my hometown. So I currently spend eight to ten hours a week uh, in trains in order to go back to my parents' house on the weekend where I can indulge in my weird hobby. Uh, pretty much being the only new city for uni, however, means uh, that I wasn't able to build any social connections beyond working on assessments together. So after all this waffling, which you can gut down as much as you want as you choose to answer, no, not at all. Absolutely not. Um, I come to my question. Should I try to find a new hobby I can exercise in the town where I study and try my best to find some new friends to fill the empty time? Or should I continue the way I'm doing now for the next one to one and a half years until I get my BSc? Thank you so much for the podcast and Simon for showing me that even when you feel like nothing makes sense, you can still finish uni. An anonymous listener who still doesn't get fully, doesn't fully get, uh, no, doesn't fully get no other in semester four. What? <laughs> no idea. Anyway. Why can't Anonymous do their hobby in their new town? They had to go home to their parents. Why can't they do it in the town, the new town? So I think they can't do it because obviously they'll need some form of maybe like a workshop. Or oh, okay. They say especially replicas of clothing and woodwork from medieval artwork. So all the kind of tools they might need right, okay. are, are at home. And when they finish uni, they're going to have their own place. They're going to bring all the, the tools from home eventually. But for the time being, I suppose, if they're at uni, yeah. then yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, their, their kind of their final question was was do they find a new hobby or continue what what they're doing now and and just commute at the weekends to do this? But obviously, that's Im- impacting their social life in this new university town city. I, I mean, I feel that to me, I feel like you shouldn't have to abandon the hobby um, because you know, no. it, it, like finding a new hobby is like, oh, what else am I interested in? Like, you've already found the thing that you really really like doing. Um, my Mm. advice would be to, I I think you should keep doing the hobby, definitely keep doing the hobby. Maybe just dial back how frequently you go home. I mean, it doesn't Mm. have to be every weekend. Maybe just do it slightly less frequently. And, you know, maybe that means that the hobby is on the back burner. Well, not on the back burner, but it takes, you know, it's less intensely followed whilst you're at university. And then when you finish, then you can resume it full throttle. But it gives you the time Mm. to socialise. Um, Because this is similar to what I had, actually, when I was at Oxford. I made the mistake of being in a long-distance relationship where I spent every weekend with my girlfriend at the time. And that meant that I didn't have a social life in Oxford at all. Like, I I barely knew a couple of people. I had nothing approaching the social life that I I had at Exeter. Um, And that was because I was always away. Uh, Every other weekend I was in Cambridge. At the the other weekend, she was in Oxford. Um, So... You know, it, it it definitely impacted my ability to enjoy uni. And I think if I could change anything in my life, I'd go back and break up with with my girlfriend before I went to Oxford. So, I don't know. Yeah. I, I feel like you shouldn't have to sacrifice the hobby. But, you know, it is. It, I totally understand your concern. And I think maybe the, the, the best compromise is just to dial back how much you're doing it. I mean, what do you think? Yeah, I think it should be a kind of a mixed bag of... Of definitely not stopping the hobby, but as Simon says, cutting down or maybe seeing is there anything, any part of that hobby that um, scale doesn't dictate where you have to be to do it. So could you, you know, uh, the replicas of clothing and things maybe get in, maybe maybe think about different materials that might be more kind of feasible to have with you at uni. So maybe like, I don't know. Um, knitting or crochet if you wanted to get into the whole knitting and crochet thing we've got my forehead <laughs> pretty 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 keen Your on that. it's very cold it um, needs something to cover it um it has a yeah, lot of surface area it radiates yeah. to space yeah obviously i think the woodwork is probably going to be something that that is that's hard to do so maybe say uh they say I currently spend eight to ten hours a week uh, on trains in order to go back to your parents place on the weekends maybe say you'll you'll go back every two weeks or every three weeks and leave and leave the kind of the, the larger pieces that you really want to do um so it's so it's not impacting so much on on what you're doing when you're when you're kind of in a different different place for university maybe see if there's something that's similar within the university or within the kind of local area 
that that might off, might facilitate that. There might be like a communal workshop spaces, you know, like pop up spaces yeah, like yeah. that. So I th- you know are fairly popular. Um, in which case, you might be able to find find somewhere to store that, or or maybe see take take those interests of uh, medieval artwork and see whether there's something that you could do that might not be the same as kind of making replicas, but spending time with people who are also interested in medieval artwork. So see, if, I don't know, there might be a gallery or or you could go live action role playing. I don't know, you know. Don't laugh there's, or there's say kind of that. Some things. people love doing laughing. Yeah. Oh, no, no I, I don't mean to make a mockery of it. I'd absolutely love to go. I've never been. Um, but, you know, um, d- definitely don't get, don't, don't stop. Yeah, the, the, definitely the hobby because stop. your hobbies are that's like me saying oh you know i'm actually gonna have to just stop singing because you know i'd never ever be able to do that um so don't stop it but maybe 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 re- reassess um the proportion of your time each week on it so it allows you to to see if you can get a little bit more kind of into uni socializing we, rather than just because i stopped those things my games definitely. workshop hobby um for uni as well uh, basically, basically, basically yeah. that was more to do with money and time, um, but yeah. I definitely regret letting it lapse because I took so much enjoyment out of it, and I'm now getting back into it. And I just bought my first set of miniatures for God even knows how many years. Um, and yeah, yeah like I, it's it's hobbies are really special things. Uh, you know, hobbies are how we mm. express who we are inside, and often that does take a physical form. It's it's something you make. Yeah. Um, and I, I, you know, I, it's, it's something that I really think you should hold on to. It's 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 kind of externalizing who you are inside, and you know, mm. I mean, a year and a half of or two years or whatever it is of um, slightly diminished activity, I think is substantially better than just cutting it off altogether. Um, you know, and yeah, as Dan says, who's to say that there, there isn't a way to do it in the new town? Um, you know, I'm sure that you've looked at this before, but maybe there is stuff that you haven't considered. Maybe there are options, and um, there will definitely be other people who. In, I mean, I don't know how big the town that you've moved to is, but I'd be surprised if there's mm. no one there who is also interested in this. If there's a university town, what I've learned from being at a yeah. couple of universities is there is always someone with the same interests as you. No matter how niche, there is always yeah. someone. Um, it's just a question of yeah. finding them. I suppose the other thing to consider too is, is, is Anonymous does say at the beginning that they suffer from a severe chronic depressive mm. disorder. So I think that's probably another reason why it's really important for you to not just stop the hobby that you care about most because it, it, it gives you something that's kind of in your comfort zone and is is you know you're used to doing and obviously brings you a lot of pleasure um and we you know you we wouldn't want to stop that and 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 end up making that that kind of that depressive disorder um worse but equally i think it might also be really good for for the disorder to to to, to be not so reliant upon having to travel yeah. To, to kind of to cope with it you know it could be a really good start of, of, of obviously it's a you know it's a big step but it could be something really good to say actually you know what I'm going to try and see if there's something I can do that's a bit closer and you may find that that that, that thing really clicks and you're, you're 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 having to go home less and less or you might be able to find that these these that the, the kind of the, the hobby that you have isn't dependent on going home just by talking to people and seeing what you you know seeing what you can I do. mean I feel like um this is a, actually a perfect opportunity for this to happen because I'm presuming that there is a summer break for your university wherever you're at university freshers week is the ideal time to find something you know mm. and go go That's around freshers fair and just you know be open to sign up to way more stuff than you're feasibly going to go to the taster sessions for and just you yeah. know pick a pick pick the ones that you're really interested in to actually go to and talk to people and you know be be prepared to take a little bit of a risk like when i started singing in exeter it was um a cappella that got me into it and i was just like oh, i've i've liked singing before i did a little bit of uh, a cappella singing when i was at school just like kind of way way lower level but like yeah it, I, I, i'll give it a go why not and that turned out to be like best decision i ever made in my life and it was just a little little mm. bit pushing outside my comfort zone um, that was all it took for me to develop this whole new part of my life, which I never would have thought, you know, if you'd asked me a couple of years ago, would I be singing in a university chapel choir, going on international tours, being recorded on CDs? Like, that's not a future I'd ever imagined for myself. But it just took, just yeah, took a little bit of too. a push. And then that's all. That's it. So don't give up the hobby, I'd say. And at Freshers Week, put yourself out there. And, you know, as, as Dan says, you've got a sort of a, it was an anxiety con- condition, wasn't it? Mm. So just just you know obviously be aware of that and you know you're the person that knows that best but take a take a chance i'd say what's next 
I don't know. But we, how many podcasts have we done now? <laughs> it's, it's been it's, too long. Um, we, we correspondence corner. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. He says. Oh, really, 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 really. And now we're in correspondence corner. We definitely just didn't have to re-record a bit of the podcast because we f***ed it up. Ever the professionals, as always. Is anyone really surprised? No, not really. I went on another podcast the other day, the Up for Discussion podcast as a guest, and hopefully we'll actually have Tom from there as a guest very soon. And I was just blown away by how professional they were. I was like, Mm. why do people give us money? Like, seriously, (laughs) why do people actually think we're worth any amount of money, let alone like a couple of dollars a month? Um, it's quite extraordinary to me. But we have had people email in. We have fantastic correspondence um, from mm. uh, f- from our fans. And gosh, where should we even start? You, you could kick us kick us off with... I, I, there's a name that I recognise, Simon. I think it'll be a name that you recognise as well. well. There's a few names I recognise here, Dan, because I remember the names of my children. All right. <laughs> like Settle you. down. <laughs> Settle. I want a nice, clean game. Uh, no, it's it's Hugo Wickman. Oh, oh huge man Wickman. Let's have have a read of this one then, shall we? Subject line, distressing content from Hugo Wickman. Dear Messrs. Moore and Clark, I am shocked. Good order there, Hugo. And appalled. Shocked, good sirs, and appalled. I thought this podcast was a place for intelligent discussion, or at the very least, questionably relevant discussion of the English choral tradition. Uh, Yeah, fair. Never in all my years have I felt so betrayed. I now realise that it is no coincidence that with the letters of the wiki cast, you can spell most of Judas Iscariot. It is clear now that this intellectual Ponzi scheme you're running is a complete farce and not at all the high quality we readers have come to expect. What did I just say? Yeah, there you go. You may now wonder what the crime may be, but I suspect you must already know. The guilt ought to be running thick through your veins like treacle runs through the respiratory system of a gingerbread man. However, for the uninformed readers who look to you for guidance, I shall clarify. Last week, several weeks ago... A certain warbling was heard from a certain cantorous tenor with the words that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness, which we all know is taken from the eighth song of Solomon, verse seven, and famously made into the anthem, Greater Love Hath No Man, J. Ireland, which Ed was singing. However, when it was identified in the podcast, was it labelled correctly? No, you wanton rapscallions, it was not. You mistakenly named it as a scribe unto the Lord by Charles Wesley with a brief pit stop of confusion, of confused idiocy at Blessed Be the God and Father, also by Wesley. While these are both, of course, excellent anthems of the highest order, only a fool could confuse them with such an iconic anthem as Greater Love. It is very common knowledge that a scribe uses text from Psalm 29, whose whole blessed i think he means while blessed Mm. uses text from one peter one both are far cries from the text ireland uses i suppose i must resign myself to the expectation of such blunders in the future must it now be necessary to also bring up each article you cover to make sure you aren't peddling lies and deception lies deception (laughs) there we go very no, nice, very good. I hope you beat the, beat this in mind for the future. I used to consider this podcast my primary source of worldly knowledge, and now everything I thought I knew has been shaken away like a sub-mediocre drawing in a bored child's etch-a-sketch. I bid you a reluctant, tinky-tonk old fruits, but down with the Nazis just as ever before. Hugo Wickham Esquire. Well, Hugo, we can only express our sincerest apologies at that uh, that that major blunder. The errata uh, in this the, the Wikicast is going to be longer than yeah. the Wikicast itself. Shocking. We can we can guarantee that 110 percent more effort, uh, which will be effort, yes, <laughs> compared to before, will go into ensuring that um, discussions of the English choral tradition maintain some degree of accuracy. Uh, only some. I degree. hang my head with shame between my legs where it normally hangs. We have an email here from Sai Surakiran Pentapati. Nice. Yeah, I know, right? Nailed it. Um, they go to say, hi, Simon and Dan. Nice. I'm Sai Surakiran Pentapati. And yeah, all of those names are mine. You can refer to me as Kieran or like, oh, like Kieran, sorry, oh, Kieran. Okay. My home state is Andhra Pradesh, India. I now live in the USA to do a PhD. Oh, cool. Regarding cows... They are very sacred sacred for Hindus. If you're religious, people regard them as the embodiment of the gods and goddesses. Hinduism is, has so many gods, and each part is supposed to be a representation of different gods. Right. There has been a rise in Hindu nationalism in India, like the rise of white nationalism in the US and similar things all over the world. Um, and so there has been a ban on beef. Now you can't even eat it if you aren't. Now you can't eat it even if you aren't a Hindu. Oh, wow. Oh, so it's like a government ban. It's not a religious ban. Yeah. Wow. Okay. 
Crikey, Moses. Um, the urine of poop. The urine and poop of cows also considered to have medicinal and antibacterial properties. Sorry. The urine of poop. Yeah, I got a little ahead of myself there. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> That really got me. The urine yeah, of poop. Yeah, I mean, poop. the urine of poop. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's like if you asked a four-year-old to come up with the most, <laughs> the most disgusting thing you could think of. The, the urine of poop. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That's lovely. Sorry, carry on. <laughs> The urine and poop of cows are also considered to have medicinal and antibacterial properties. Hindus use... <laughs> Okay. Hindus use cows during Oh no, oh god, I've completely gone Hindus use cows dung a lot Especially in rural areas um, One of the most used ways Is to mix some cow poop With water and spray it in front of your house It is a very common thing to do It's supposed to purify the air Entering your house Cow dung is also used as manure There are some instances of people drinking urine But it's not a very common thing also, pigs are considered sacred to Muslims, but oh, I don't know the extent. One of those days, okay. Oh, oh my god. There are a lot of things about the cow, and it's mentioned in a lot of religious scripts. I'm not exactly a religious person, so I may be wrong on some accounts, but I tried my best not to exaggerate things. DFTBA, Karen. You're in a poop. <laughs> You're in a poop. Thank you, Karen. Wow. So, because. Oh. But okay, thank you very much because we did. I, I specifically asked if someone could email in and, and talk about whether the cow was actually sacred or not. So that's that is very interesting mm. to, to to hear. Because um, mm. as I understand, it, and I, I'm I'm probably wrong about this, but I think Hinduism is isn't really one religion as such. It's more of a. I think it was a term that was used to kind of refer to the group of of beliefs and religions in India, but like it actually encompasses a whole bunch of different beliefs. So I don't maybe maybe so, and you know that's like one of the things why there are so many gods. So the cow represents different parts of the cow represent different parts. So different gods was that right? Is that what she said? Yes. Okay. Yes. So uh, that's interesting. Okay, I need to learn more about India generally, actually, because obviously it's, there's a billion people there, and you know. <laughs> Whoa! <Sorry. laughs> Jesus! <Sorry. laughs> that was yeah. an amazing thing. <laughs> it's all happening. Thank you very much. <laughs> You sound wow. like Michael Jackson. God, I think my um, Woo! I think my Shama um, <laughs> Shama. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> oh God, I think my temporal lobe just flew out my left nostril and hit the back wall. Yahoo! Goodness, <laughs> Michael, do you want a tissue? <laughs> God. Oh my God, that's a tissue. Just a bunch of idiots laughing at sneezes and urine of poop. <laughs> wow. What a, how amazing. Wow. Thank you so much for that email. <laughs> Thank you. It was brilliant. Thank you. Was it really Kyron? Great. Was that right? K K Kyron? K- oh, yeah, because it was a uh, Kyron. Yes. Thank you so much, Kyron, for that email. Oh, my God. Okay, cool. So next up, we have an email from Mathilda Booker. But Book? But I'm not sure. I'm very sorry if I'm... Oh, you're Belgian. Okay. Very sorry. It could be Boucher. Sorry for your loss yesterday. I, I, was, I was secretly hoping that Belgium were going to be in the final. Oh, yeah. Um, they played such brilliant football in the... Of also, course. the French played like dirty little I bastards. Did... I have absolutely no shame in saying that. It was really I didn't. Poor. I didn't watch the game. It seemed to be very balanced from the, sp- the BBC Sports like commentary. Frankly, given like some of the other games in this World Cup, like not England have, have been at the receiving end. Oh, yeah, the ones where they lot. think they're playing rugby. Yeah, like... What I thought was hilarious was Shocking. when I, t- I tweeted um, after the England Columbia game, I was like, that's what you get for playing dirty, jog on, you cheat, like, for, you know, for yeah. trying to cheat. And loads of people, I say loads, it was like a handful of people, were like, uh, England were the ones playing dirty in that game? Or, like, you clearly mm. bought off the ref, Columbia wasn't doing anything wrong? It was like, that wasn't a penalty. I'm like, I'm sorry, what? What game were yeah. you watching? Where he rode Harry Absolutely Kane like a donkey. Um... Yeah, unbelievable. Some some really dirty play, and VAR does seem to have actually like I think it's been a positive contribution, but it does miss a lot seemingly. Anyway, um, yeah, sorry for your loss, Matilda. Um, hello, Mister Moore and Doctor Clark. Long time reader, first time writer. Thank you so much for the amazing non content. The quality is always improving, even if our Anglican references are completely wrong. 
Anyway, I've created a Wikicast bingo. Maybe it'll be fun to share it to the other readers so we can all complete it while reading your great podcasts. By the way, try those... Oh, she's le- oh my god, she's given us some French tongue twisters. I'd um I miss oh, no. so, We'll get to the tongue twisters in a second. The Wikicast bingo. Um <laughs> Okay, these are fantastic. Um <laughs> I'm just opening the, the file. Oh, now. this is amazing. I have I love this more than any of my children. Bonus, something is niche. <laughs> that's definitely happened this episode. They're really, that's really Simon good. Simon talks about Apple. Sally LePage is mentioned. No one had time to see anything <laughs> yeah. for Critics yeah. Corner. <laughs> These are really good. We're going to upload, okay, so we're going to upload this um, Wikicast Bingo to the Facebook page and the community page yeah. on Patreon uh, for the next listening session. In fact, we should uh, also send it to the folks who do the stream. Yes. So everyone can play And I will tweet it. I will, I will, um, uh, tweet this before the episode comes out. That is amazing. Crisis Corner is missed. <laughs> I love how also half of these, the names have just been switched around. Like something said about Dan's eyebrows. Dan does some cheeky self-promotion of his YouTube channel. Simon talks about Apple. Dan's PhD is mentioned. Something says about... Dan talks about Pixel Simon Girl. Says something... so someone says something about Simon's huge forehead. Yeah. A name is stumbled upon in Patreon Corner. We've literally... Guys are terribly unqualified to answer the crisis. These, literally, about 90% of these has been... Can we... Can we? Um, what have we not done this episode? We haven't said baguette. We could take that one off. When mm. we did Crisis Corner, did we yeah. say Hannah Kav- Kavanagh in a dramatic voice? I can't actually remember if we did or not. I can't remember. We haven't talked about... I, I don't know. I don't think we did. We haven't talked about biology, so we haven't talked about Sally the Page. You've talked about Apple... We just mentioned the Discord. We, unfortunately, we can't do a clean sweep because we did do Crisis Corner. Um, and we talked about singing. We haven't mentioned the yellowness of our merchandise, which is... We haven't butchered another language we're yet. We're about but to, yes, because... We're uh, about let's, to. Let's, um, I will leave the rest of that thing at fucking fantastic work, Mathilda. I, Mathilda, I love that so much. Um, right, so we try some of these uh, French... Let's, let me put some inappropriate French music on. So, the, so uh, do you want to attempt this one first, Dan? We, we can. Uh, there's two, oh, so you God, can do this okay. one first. I'll do the other one first. Oh, I no. want to do the second one. No. Second one's easier. No. Okay, I'll to- I'll do the. I'll do the first one. Okay. Un chasseur sachant chasser sans son chien est un bon chasseur. That's the second one. You'd lo- you you yes. Colombian dirty <laughs> cheater. I'll also I'll also do the first one. Uh. Le, le, oh <laughs> yeah. gosh, here we go. Les chasse. Oh my god. Ch- Hang on, I'll, I'll give you. did one. Le, 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 Les chasse. Oh, le, no, that. No, yeah, you Les chasse yeah. de la archiduchesse sont elles séchées, archi sèches? Something like that? Which means the socks of the archduchess. Are they dry? Extra and dry? And then Dan's one was a hunter that can hunt without his dog is a good hunter. Un chasseur sachant. <laughs> chasser sans chance, yes. <laughs> it's really fun, actually. Un one. chasseur sachant chasser sans son chien est un bon chasseur. Can you, I'm going to try to see how quickly you can do it. Un chasseur sachant chasser sans son chien est un bon ah, chasseur. He failed that. No, try again. Well, we tick that box on the bingo. <laughs> un chasseur sachant sa- no. <laughs> oh, no, you're from that, mate. <laughs> un chasseur sachant chasser sans son chien est un bon chasseur. F*** it. That was... Gr- oh. La- lastly, she says, lastly, cats all the way. God save the queen, Mathilda. <laughs> Marvellous. One of the best emails we've ever had. Mathilda, you're a gem. Marvellous. Thank you so much. And we have one here from Rory. Uh, it says, Dear San and Diamond, I wrote to you a while ago expressing how many of our interests overlap and this trend seems to be never ending. Hearing Dang talk about sorted food is great as I've watched them for a couple of years. And Simon, if you need more convincing on them, I'll let you know they did a collab with the Yogscast during a, doing a World of Warcraft inspired video on yes, each channel. Yes, I actually saw uh, that. Yeah, I, need to, I watched half it's really of good. it. I need to watch their, the other half. I'm, I'm obsessed. I think the sorted food guys are amazing. I'd love to meet them. Um, he goes on to say, I wanted to know if you had gone through... Had gone through with your plan of playing D&D and uh, how that's going so far. Yours truly, Rory, age 20 and 7 tenths. P.S. You guys should definitely still play, uh, keep talking and nobody expl- exp... Oh, my God, we actually should for Sponge and Electric. That'd be amazing. Yeah. They're, oh, f- fantastic shout. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write that down somewhere. That is yeah. an amazing idea. Um, 
Um, yeah, uh, um, Dungeons and Dragons. We haven't played yet. Basically, we went uh, the, the group of friends. We went on a holiday, and we just never quite got around to doing it um, because we mm. were all gonna. We're not in the same place all that often. Um, so, like, well, there is another holiday coming up in September. I'm going to push for us to do some then because I'm so keen to do it, and I haven't had a chance. Although I did just find a um, something uh, on Imger Imger. Im- Imgo, however you're supposed to pronounce it, I'm never quite sure. Which was um, somebody had made a grid, like imagine a, a chessboard for human size, and they did Dungeons and Dragons combat, um, but life size. So people were walking oh, wow. on a grid, and everyone had stats, and they had giant D20s and giant D6s and stuff like that. That's cool. so. I, I I just posted it to the group, and I was like, "Can we please do this in France? It'd be so much fun." Um, so I haven't done it yet. I'm very, very keen to do so. And I tell you what, I promise I'm going to go on sorted food and I'm going to add a few things to my to watch list. And I'll, gi- I'll give these guys a go because I know you love them so much, Dan. I am going to... I'll see. I'll, I'll have a look. I'll have a, have a suss mm. them out. Um, but... Yeah, that was that was that was basically it, wasn't it? <laughs> Sorry, I felt. Was there another part to that question? Yeah, you definitely just said no and yep at the same time. Then yeah, yeah. Yep. Sorry, I did that thing where I wasn't I wasn't really listening. <laughs> so you, could, you could tell also in my tone of voice. You were like, I didn't yep. even let you finish. I didn't even let you finish the sentence. You were talking. I went yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, in all seriousness, there was another part. Because Rory goes on to say, if you add an S, no, if you add a D to San and Diamond, you get Sand and Diamond. So what I'm saying is, mix you two together, add a couple of Ds in, and you both become very hard. We already knew this. We, I mean, yeah, this is common knowledge. (laughs) Thank Thank you, you, Rory. Rory, that was a a very astute observation. I feel like we should probably draw this one to a close, you know, Dan, because we've got a few more, we have a few more messages. Um, mm. and um, we have some messages from some favourites but we're going to save those for the next episode because this one's been going on yes. for a while and the, a lot of people were waiting a while for their emails to be re- uh, addressed so we yes. should, we, let's draw this one to a close we will be back next week that is a promise, we will be um, and um, what have we learned about today Dan? This week, uh, Simon, we've learned about Vikram Bawa yeah. the Indian fashion advertising and landscape photographer based in Mumbai that was it, yes, the man who has a, a bewildering array of talents yeah, so the name, first and kind of foremost, uh, started working as a managing director of a chemical firm at age and then, uh, with a math, and then became, got a maths degree, and then became like an award-winning photographer, as you do. Yeah, mm-hmm. and Vikram, you're a, you're and a lad. And then we talked about uh, well, what we've been up to. We explained on our absence. Yeah, why why we've had this massive hiatus. You've been away in Portugal and Jersey, and I've been away in Rome and France. Uh, and then we'll be going away later on this month. Uh, we'll be seeing each other very soon. I'll be coming up to Cambridge and mm. Simon will be coming down to Exeter. So that'll be fun. So keep an eye out on uh, either Sponge Electric or Simon's channel for uh, some yep. some top banter uh, when the two lads reunite. Um, we spoke about, well, we, we did Crisis, no, we did co- Critics Corner yeah, first because that's while. the structure of the podcast where we both reviewed some or recommended I, I some definitely... channels we've been watching. Music with Miles. And, and I definitely Up recommend everyone jump. to watch The Eclamps, especially if you're a Firefly fan. You absolutely should. Um, and uh, yeah, I recommend some YouTube channels. And yeah, we, we, we fulfilled uh, quite a few of the stereotypes on new Wikicast um, um, bingo, which I think we need to ne- do the next episode with yes. that open in front of us. <laughs> Just so we make sure we hit every single yeah. one. I love it. I love that so much because... I mean, before we get to the cracking correspondence corner, we had uh, lighter than usual Patreon corner and crisis corner. It was, it, it was. I felt like quite. It wasn't for once. Someone mm. wasn't in a real horrible situation. It was. It was. It was about hobbies. It was nice. Um, hopefully, we were of some use. And then, yeah, we had some mm. amazing correspondence. It was just. But this, this has been a good episode, mm. not least because it's contained urine of poop. Oh boy. <laughs> Could someone make a fan art? Could someone do some nice incredible. calligraphy, please? Absolutely incredible. And of urine of poop. I just want to... I, I want that. And, and I will... If you do something nice, I will print that out and frame it and put it in my office. I just want that as a thing. 
So that's all for this week's episode. Don't forget to subscribe to us on your podcasting service of choice. You can like us on Facebook. And if you'd like to see our faces, check out our YouTube channel, Spongy and Electric. Wikicast bingo scores, you're in of poop. <laughs> and other thoughts on the show can be sent to us at spongyelectric at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you. Join us again for another tumble down the wacky ribbit hole. I'm sorry? It's ribbit. What did you say then? Pleasure. The wacky ribbit hole? The wacky ribbit hole. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love a good wacky ribbit that hole. Sounds, that sounds like a euphemism. <laughs> Join us again for another tumble down the wacky ribbit hole. And, and we'll, we'll see, see you, you next, next time. time. <laughs> 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 and oh, scenes. So hang on, wait, wait. Just, just, just before we answer the question, my understanding is that Based on that email, Anonymous can't do their new hobby in the in their new town, right? <laughs> sorry, sorry, yeah. <laughs> that was the most unsubtle way we clearly... Um, for listeners, Simon and I are, try- are trying to make a really, really concerted effort to just get away from using gender-specific pronouns because it's, it's not no, no, no. necessary. I don't, I don't think we just... can include this. <laughs> oh, me... I think we can. No, no, no. Me... I think because me, we, 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 do again, we, we don't know the... <laughs> Okay, okay. Because like just... you literally did say, so I think Anonymous can't do it, so why can't they do it? <laughs> so, okay. Okay, right, this time with a bit more subtlety. Um, okay. Okay, so why can't Anonymous... <laughs> <laughs> I'm f***ing up on other words now. <laughs> why can't Anonymous do their new hobby in... Sorry, the... the... Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get this right. Oh, if we if we need something to go at the end of the podcast, I think yeah, we found, we found it. it. Okay. <clears throat> so why? Why don't I? I'll just no, do no, the no, lead. No, I'll no, do no, the no, because you finished the reading, and I, I, it's just it, it could tack me on to the end of the email easily. I'll just do it okay. that way. Okay. So, all right. So before we hang on, before we go on to answer the question, can we just clear up? Why can't anonymous do their new hobby? In ah. I've got a big wheelie.